Good afternoon and welcome to the Living Well radio program. You can find us here every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on KATB 89.3 in Anchorage, KJLP 88.9 on Palmer. You can also catch us online at katb.org. My name is Cammy, and I'm also joined here with Betty. Say hi to everybody, Betty. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> Such a friendly voice here is in the studio today. That is exactly what I wanted. You did a good job. And we are so excited to have Crystal Hoffman joining us again today. We had her here last week, and we just couldn't quite fit in everything that we wanted to talk about. So we're pleased that she was willing to come back and do a part two, um, kind of a follow-up and expand on some things where we, we kind of left them hanging there. But Crystal Hoffman is the wife of Pastor Ron Hoffman, who is an associate pastor at the Anchorage Baptist Temple, and together they serve in the frontline ministries. And kind of the backstory on that is Crystal and Ron have been working with youth and and serving faithfully in that ministry for uh, 20 years and have just been so faithful to do that, but have recently graduated, as she calls it, from youth to working with young adults. And last week, as we were talking, Crystal, you shared with us the tagline of what uh, Frontline Ministries is, and you mentioned that it was where Christ and culture collide. So I kind of want to start off with that and have you expand and just kind of reiterate what does that mean and why that tagline and just kind of give us a summary of what Frontline is is all about. Great. Well, thanks for having me again. Um, the idea behind <coughs> it is is we are living in a day and age where we are not setting ourselves aside as Christians. We are blending in and we've adopted this thought process that we need to be everywhere that a non-Christian is. We need to be doing what they're doing so that they see us as real. And we can do some friendship evangelism type of, of thought process. Mm-hmm. But, but in doing that, we've watered down our faith. And so our tagline where, where Christ and culture collide is the idea that if you are not living a life that is set apart, that clearly displays a life of Jesus Christ, your hopes of friendship evangelism are probably not going to happen. And um, I, I wrote down just a couple of things because this is what we talk about. We, we say that it, the idea is not that you get to just add Christ to your life when you become a Christian. You don't just get to add Christ. You need to subtract sin. Um, you can't just have a change in your belief. You have to have a change in your behavior. Uh, Somehow we're wanting to have a spiritual experience without having a cultural impact. Or we want a spiritual conversion without Mm -hmm. any moral conversions. Uh, The idea of a revival without personal repentance and reformation. And so somehow people think, oh, like you join a Alaska club or, you know, some, oh, I can just add this to my schedule. Oh, well, I, I... accepted Christ. I can just add him to my busy schedule. And when I can, I'll get to church or, you know, make an activity. And, and we want it to be an absolute complete following of Jesus Christ, that he is not just the savior of your life. He is Lord of your life. And when he is Lord of your life, you will collide with the culture and your message will be distinctly different, but you'll also be a light. You will be salt to those that are around you because you will offer hope where they don't have hope. So that's kind of, you know, that's not a mission statement because I know mission <laughs> statements are supposed to be nice and succinct, right? Um, so please don't, wow, that was a long mission statement. But that's just the idea of what we are trying to impress upon our young adults is mm-hmm. that um, you have to, when you are a true believer of Jesus Christ, he has to be Lord of your life. And when he is Lord, you will collide with the culture because your life is lived differently. Thank you for sharing that. And so having said that, uh, what would you say are the challenges that you guys face or um, rather are dealing with through the ministry of young adults? Yeah. Oh, well, one thing that I think is, is huge in, in what has happened with our culture is 90% of our young people are educated in the public school system, which as we know, teaches evolution. um, And that goes back to Genesis, our very foundation of God's word. And many of our doctrines are in Genesis chapters one through 11, even the doctrine of marriage, what the Lord says marriage is. And so what has happened to our young people is their faith has been completely eroded. They sit in school from the time that they're in elementary school and they are taught 
that you're basically an animal, you have evolved, you have natural instinct, instincts, you have your own desires, your own wishes. It's a moral relativism. It's a naturalism. You are your own God. And they, they hear these kind of things at school that it took millions and billions of years. And they're taught this by, you know, reading in their science books or listening to somebody teach them. And they see scientists in white coats doing experiments. So it seems so official. Mm-hmm. And they're, they come to Sunday school and maybe they see a cute little cartoon sketch of Noah and his ark with a couple little giraffes and elephants sticking out of it. And, wow, that just doesn't seem even feasible. And I mean, I could go on about the just the difference between the way school might present something and then the way maybe even in church we can present something that these are Bible stories. And let's face it, we tend to think of a story as a happily ever after or in the beginning. Um, and so... I I think we can't negate the fact that what is facing so many, and even in our churches, because many churches even will promote that millions and billions of years are what God used. And, um, you know, as we study Genesis, the evening and the morning were the first day. Mm -hmm. So not only the word used for day, it evening, morning is added to it, and the number is added with it. But this has been eroded from our young people. And so you can't erode the foundation of your faith. You can't erode the foundation of marriage and then have a young person that feels confident Mm -hmm. to stand. Mm -hmm. And so they're very disillusioned. And we are seeing that a lot when we talk to young people and we try to help them defend their faith. They don't feel like they can defend Mm -hmm. their faith. So that's been a big challenge. Um, And I, I even have to say that there's at times... I mentioned we homeschooled, and so we used many of the curriculum from Answers in Genesis as we were teaching our children about defending their faith. But I, I realized how much that is lacking in our our church families and in our in our churches. That are we teaching them how to defend their faith? That the Bible is one hundred percent God's word, and um, and it's cast a lot of doubt, and that's eroded the faith. And that's that that's been a, a really interesting part of the challenge, because, again, it goes into then different thoughts about marriage. Well, mm-hmm. let's redefine marriage as we know. Um, mm-hmm. And and if we cast God out, then I get to become my own God. And as scripture says, every man did what was right in his own eyes. Mm-hmm. What kind of society then does that become? And we see that around us every day when we hear of mass shootings and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. So, um Those are just some of the real tangible challenges of how to help these young people realize that they have they can have a rock solid faith in Jesus Christ. His word is true. One hundred percent inspired word of God. And so we've definitely seen that has been one of our big challenges. So it sounds like it's really about getting back to the basics and establishing that foundation that they can build their life upon. Very young people would learn in children's church. I mean, not to you know, negate the fact that these are young adults and living life, but just getting right. back to that, building that foundation. Very much so. And and we, we live in a culture that's not just neutral toward the Lord. They are hostile. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was talking to a young person the other day, and I said, what is the most challenging part for you trying to, to live your faith? And she said, people attack me when they find out that I go to church. You go to church? Isn't that for little kids? What would you believe that could help you now? And, and and so she shared, and they were just kind of more demeaning toward her was kind of the way that she described it to the point that she kind of was like, oh, I don't want to say anything more. And, and we don't have to be ashamed of our faith. We can stand firm. But, you know, we, again, we live in a culture that if you believe in the Bible, which I don't know if you remember this, Cami, one time— um, Betty, we, in our junior high class, we were talking about um, just creation and all of that, just so that they would understand the parts of, of how important it is to be able to defend their faith. And one of our young girls who went to a public school, she said, well, if I went to a Christian school, how would they even be able to teach science? Hmm. And I was just taken back by that because in her mind, if you could not teach millions and billions of years Mm -hmm. and that man is an animal and, you know, go through that everything just kind of one day came about and we evolved and all the processes that have never been observed. Um, In her mind, if you didn't have that, how would you even teach science? And so that just goes to show that 
and, and as we know, we say, you know, it that takes faith. It takes mm-hmm. faith to believe in that. And we have faith in the word of God. We have faith in something very tangible that God says in the beginning, God, I created. I created. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's it's and that's another part for them is it's not just a neutral society that we're living in. If you well, and even Ravi Zacharias, when he was here, he mentioned how he gets attacked for his beliefs and, and standing firm on the word of God. And so it's it's just a different it's a different world for for our young people and the mm-hmm. challenges that they are going through. Well, and two, I've noticed um, that sometimes it can kind of be a mod podge of faith systems that these that people buy into. And so as you kind of talk to them about their spiritual journey, they've got pieces of this Mm -hmm. religion Mm -hmm. or pieces of that, and they've kind of put it together and have some kind of an abstract idea of who God is or isn't. Um, So breaking that down and rebuilding that up, I'm sure, is a challenge as well. Yes, very much so. And that kind of leads me into my next question, too. So that kind of establishes what the challenges are that you guys face in the ministry. But moving into more of what the needs are of young adults, I know that when Betty and I have, you know, other women on the program and they kind of talk about their ministries and the challenges that women are facing, we keep hearing over and over again that women lack community and that Mm -hmm. accountability system. Is that... um, parallel with what you find in young adults as far as what they are needing and desiring? Absolutely. And again, it goes back to the brokenness of homes where there's just that that identity that would center them is gone and it's broken and it's fractured. And um, so absolutely, I, I even have that down. Healthy relationships and friendships is just something that I think of as just being a, a deep need. And our classes started life groups, and I always tell people, don't get that mixed up with a Bible study, because as you know, our church offers a lot of different Bible mm-hmm. studies, which are great, but life groups are not Bible studies. We do come together. Um, we have one of our assistant pastors who gives different questions that can spark good conversation, but the idea behind life groups is just fellowship and community, building a time where young people can come together together. Maybe they'll have dinner, snacks, have maybe half hour. Maybe it'll be longer, depending on what the topic is, that they'll talk. But then they just live life together as far as just have fun, play games, go hiking, skiing, whatever it is that that group kind of enjoys doing, playing games. And we are really seeking to try to build healthy friendships and relationships through life groups just to give them something more outside of church. Um, Because as I say... Show me your friends. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you your future. And and these young people, if they don't have those friendships to hold on to, they go back to what they had gravitated to probably at some point when they were making the wrong decisions. So healthy friendships, we see that definitely that need in and not just women. I mean, men, too. Mm-hmm. Men sure. enjoy doing mm-hmm. things together. Yes. However, Betty, we were out. We took our women out. <laughs> Guns and roses. I know everybody hears that and they're like, what? Concert? Were they in town? No, no. Uh, I'm but glad was, you established that. I know, I know. But it was just the ladies, hence roses, and the guns were, we were going to go out and shoot guns. So we went away for a retreat, uh, Friday, Saturday type of retreat, and um, talked about prayer, which was just really neat to, to build a concept behind prayer and praying for each other. But then we you know, shot guns. And so guys do stuff together. They tend to build relationships that way. But we did do stuff together mm-hmm. on that time. We didn't just sit around and talk. We shot guns and had some gun safety. And, mm-hmm. and, and the girls and also things. went uh, riding. They wore, rode the four-wheelers yeah. and the side-by-sides. Yes. Had a great time. They d- I could not believe how long they can stay out shooting. <laughs> uh, they did not get tired of it. And this was women. Yes. Young adults, young yeah. girls. Yeah. we. It was a lot of fun. We mm-hmm. it just took the guys up. I went up to do the cooking, um, and then I kind of disappeared as soon as I had all the food out for the men. But uh, my husband came in. He's like, men can go through a lot more ammo than women. <laughs> <laughs> so, And they went for like an eight-hour ride and yeah. shot guns for three hours. And so um, so we, we are. We're really trying to do things that, that will build fellowship. So in addition to our life groups, we have our frontline men and women. Those meet once a month. The frontline men meet and then the, another uh, Sunday night, the women will meet. So they don't, we don't joining them together. We just feel like the conversation just turns very different. So my husband's dealing with the men a lot on just being a courageous man. What does, what does being a man, what does a warrior look like? And um, it's, it's kind of a concept, and I hate to say it. And for all those um, single mothers out there, the challenge that you face must be absolutely enormous. Um, 
but because we don't have a, a lot of male figures in in young people's lives anymore, that picture of what being a warrior for Jesus Christ looks like is not there. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. It's very, very hard. And I'm sure there's many single mothers who struggle and, and pray and yearn for there to be men in their yes. in their children's lives. I'm I'm sure of that. Or if they've yes. been widowed. I'm mm-hmm. And um, and that is something that my husband is is dealing with the men about being a warrior, what this looks like. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of jumping, but we're, we're talking about trying to form a ministry called the Triple Braided Cord. Um, it comes from Ecclesiastes 4.12, and it just talks about, well, you know, one is going to be easily defeated. Two can stand back to back, but a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And we are trying to train our young adults to reach down, to anchor some of our younger people, junior high, high schoolers, mentor, live life with them, try to you know come alongside them, but then also reach up to an older man or woman who has experience, who has wisdom that both that junior high and middle-aged person are lacking. And, um, and so as we talk about relationships, we've just talked about how can we anchor our, our church? How can we anchor all three demographics of that middle age, reaching down to grab that junior higher, reaching up to grab an older person and have a triple braided cord that will, you know, create consistency in the lives of all three age groups? Um, so it's just, you know, as we think about challenges and needs and what we're trying to do, we're trying to create warriors. We're trying to create women who have healthy relationships and friendships, mm-hmm. which, of course, creates great identity. You know, we as women t- can tend to struggle with our identity. Right. Um, and that's just, again, eroded through everything that's in our media. So one of the things that I really like about frontline ministry is um, while we are calling it the young adult ministry, which it is. It encom- encompasses uh, all ages. That's yes. the thing that I think has been the biggest surprise uh, throughout this ministry is that uh, there's not only the young adults, but that we also have uh, young married couples, mm-hmm. middle-aged couples, older adults uh, that are joining. And you were talking about life groups. Uh, the one that my daughter goes to, uh, she wouldn't miss it for anything. And tonight they were going on a hike, mm-hmm. and she's just so excited. She got all of her stuff together to take to school, so all she has to do is change quickly and then just go straight to the hike. But she loves it. And I know, Cami, your daughter's a part of that one also. Yeah, and you know what I, what has just been such a blessing, and I know, Crystal, you're, you're in Ron's heart, is always been that there's just been a gap. We're losing our young people. Mm-hmm. Once they graduate, where do they go mm-hmm. from there? Where do they fit into the church? And Frontline has definitely provided that that bridge to fill the gap. And I know that that's been one of the most difficult parts of um, my daughter making the decision to to go to college elsewhere was leaving this ministry. It has mm-hmm. just been such a blessing to her. So appreciate your guys' um, just your service in that. Yeah. That, it's neat to hear that they don't want to leave us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a pretty major decision. Yeah. <laughs> so and, She'll love college, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you talked about the Guns and Roses activity. Was there? What are some of the other activities that you guys have done to just kind of fulfill and provide these opportunities of additional fellowship? We try to do outreach in the community as well. And I kind of use a term, in-reach, um, to also help people in the church. Or um, So outwardly, to reaching out of the community, we um, went and we passed out water bottles and food to homeless and just engaged time, just sitting and chatting with them for a while. Um, we've tried to do just various service projects that we found a need of. Betty's such a great resource, and so we're always grateful when she can um, point out things that she's been made aware of. So we have some things coming up in the fall um, where we're going to be able to to help. In reach, we, we try to minister to our senior saints or our widows. Um, so our senior saints, we've um, fixed a big Thanksgiving dinner because that's not something that they would do being on their own. And so our young adults hosted that and we served them and had them all into the cafeteria and they decorated it and just made it really fun for them. And a Valentine's Day, you know, where they tend to maybe have lost a loved one and it's hard to celebrate that time. Um, we just tried to shower them with the love of Jesus and make cookies and just encouraging bookmarks and 
Um, we even did things for college students. Mm -hmm. We sent care packages to our college students. I probably should keep a list of different things that we have done. Um, but just, just trying to reach different demographics, even inside our church, um, as well as, as outside. Right now we are doing yard work and projects for widows and um, single moms in our church. If they need something done, we have an ad in our bulletin trying to, you know, do that. So we have some of our young men who are helping. Um, I know we went and visited some elderly. So just just trying to have different things like that. But then we still do fun things. We still do just activities where it's just about, you know, come hang out. And we have a barbecue coming up. And um, we did a, a scavenger hunt where we went all around town. It was a turkey chase. But um, anyhow, I liked it because... Ron and I got to sit at Bailey's Furniture in the TV room, and we were watching a movie waiting for them to find us so really? we could give them the next clue. Oh, my goodness. So I was like, this is a fun place to get to sit. Can we have a date night here? How fun. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. People came in, can we help you? And we're like, well, we're kind of hiding from people who are doing a scavenger hunt. <laughs> so we do fun things as well. But we, we do also try to have ministry and outreach. But, um, yeah. We still have fun activities that it's just, yeah, just us. I just want to interject in case I forget at the end. If somebody's listening that might want to get involved in a life group or in Frontline, tell mm -hmm. us how tell us how we can get in contact with you and find out more. Well, always through the church. Uh, the church's phone number is three 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 six five three five, and we through Frontline we have a card and I, I would even think it's probably on our Facebook page it is. I hate to say that I'm Facebook illiterate um, I'm trying I was just getting a lesson this morning from my daughter about events and feeds news feeds and <laughs> I'm so <laughs> awful about that but I just prefer face-to-face -face relationships and not cyber you know relationships right. so, nothing wrong with that but anyhow so um, it probably is on our front uh, Facebook page um, and that would just be Frontline if you looked up Frontline um, in Alaska, maybe, or maybe even tag. I think it does say Frontline AK. AB, it, Frontline AK I, or I Frontline so. with ABT. It probably could be found through that. Um, but we even have some um, life groups that are going on through the summer. Okay. And um, so absolutely, you know, my husband, again, Ron Hoffman with Frontline, anybody could call in if they were just looking for a group to, yes, especially have hang out and just enjoy good Christian fellowship because that is our goal. And, and I yeah. know that this is probably common sense, but just in case it's not, I mean, is there any minimum criteria before you can get involved and jump into this ministry or get involved in a life group? And none, none whatsoever. It, it's just if that is what you are desiring is Christian fellowship. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything. They might one week say, we're having tacos, bring some cheese with you. But <laughs> <laughs> but usually if you're a new person, you're not going to get recruited to bring anything. I'm just <laughs> The teasing. first time anyway. Yeah. <laughs> After that, everybody. You only a visitor something. once. That's right. <laughs> and I know they always love it when Nicole shows up because um, Betty's always like, take food. And of course, they love it. You yeah. know, when does a teenager, young person turn down food? <laughs> Never. Exactly. Never. Crystal, tell us. Um, I know we're about we're running out of time. But I want you to share with how have you seen God work, some ah. things that have happened, things that have occurred. Yeah. Um, well, we really have been praying um, over this ministry, um, 1 Thessalonians 1, 7. And it, it talks out and starts as, and so you became a model to all the believers. And as I just kind of highlight some points, it says, the Lord's message rang out from you. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Uh, you turned from idols to serve the living and true God. And, and typically we think of idols as being, you know, statues. But we are seeing young people begin to grasp that mm -hmm. living for Jesus means rejecting the lies of society, rejecting um, the idols of so much television and what you watch and the secular music and, and all the social media. So we have just really begun to see some growth um, in just our short eight months. Our class has grown. Uh, yeah. It's quadrupled in size in just the you know, time that we've been in there. And so we're just seeing, we're seeing friendships formed. Um, I think a neat thing that we have going is we have a prayer team that is just praying over the ministry, um, praying over our, our young adult ministry and how that looks like as we are part of this whole church body. So praying for our church. God is just 
growing the individuals. And and there's no point in having a, a big ministry if each of us individually are not strong and healthy mm-hmm. in our individual walks with the Lord. And so through the discipleship that we've been doing, meeting one-on-one, we're seeing, you know, our young couples say, um, you know, we were thinking about throwing in the towel, but can we meet with you? And we're going to try to make this work. And um, even just discussions that they will be having, that they'll call us or, hey, can we come over? We're, we're debating this and we want your insight into this. And um, sure, come on over. And, you know, um, so we, we just find that they're talking about the Lord. The Lord is on their lips. The Lord is on their heart. And where maybe before they were sitting and watching a a movie together, probably a raunchy movie, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which in my mind most are. But anyhow, um, they're they're now talking about the Lord and what it looks like to live their faith. And um, and so that is that has been huge. Um, Praying circles. Betty, help me. Is that the name of the book Mm -hmm. that we've Mm -hmm. been doing? The 40 day challenge. Yes. Draw circles. Draw circles. Thank you. Um, That has been a great challenge um, Mark Battison wrote the book and we took that book and we did a 40 day prayer challenge. And, you know, as you know, we just sat Cami, and we've just asked God, we've learned to pray a little more specifically. And at times that's, that's scary. You, you feel like you're putting yourself out there to pray a big, bold prayer. And it doesn't mean God is going to answer it that way. But I know that 100% of the prayers that I don't pray will never get answered. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm willing, just Lord, you'd be honored and glorified. And if you would do this, would you do this? And so that has been exciting, challenging our young people in the layers of uh, layers and levels of taking your prayer notch, uh, prayer life up a notch. And um, so, yeah, I, I don't know, maybe I, I think of Betty being in our class and just having people like her, like she mentioned, we have our young adults, but we have older ages as well that we are just trying to instill in them the need to reach and and mentor. And and Betty definitely has been that in the class. So we've seen a little bit more responsibility of older people in our church realizing I need to be there for these younger younger people. They need direction and they need Mm -hmm. wisdom and the younger people being receptive to it. The younger people have been very receptive. Yeah. Very loving. Um, very much embracing anyone anyone that comes through the doors yeah uh, they've been glad to see and made them feel very very welcome i believe yeah yeah so that that has been neat to see mm-hmm. um we we definitely have a fellowship time we have breakfast and fellowship sunday mornings we start about nine fifteen. we have breakfast we have praise and worship music and then teaching begins but we don't just do a quick three minute two minute mm-hmm. shake hands we have a good 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, where we walk around the room and everybody is fellowshipping. And I'm telling you, that's really, really a sweet picture when you just step back for a moment and you look across the room and you see all age demographics right there Mm -hmm. reaching and talking and encouraging each other. I want to give you the opportunity to be real specific about where Frontline can be found. ABT can be a big building, big campus here, um, and difficult to find room. So tell us literally what's somebody going to expect when they walk in the door, and how can they find where you guys are located? Okay, so we are on the, um, what would that be? That would be the north side of the of the campus. So we have what we call the creek side of our building. Um, so it's the back side, north side of our building. It's room 207, so we are on the second floor. Um, we have a large classroom I and mean, we have a kitchen in it, which mm-hmm. makes it nice, a little kitchen area. Um, so it's, it's a big, big room. Um, hopefully we don't seem intimidating. We have greeters outside of our door <laughs> to try to welcome people and sure. make them feel welcome. But, um, I, if you're not familiar with the campus, the good thing is, is that we have greeters at all of our doors. And so if you ever walked into the building and just said, I'm, I'm looking for the young adult ministry of Anchorage Baptist Temple, I'm here. What does that look like? What they would get you yes. right up to, um, to the classroom because it is, it is kind of big to navigate. What do we have a quarter mile here of building? You could easily <laughs> end up in the toddler sometimes. room. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they'll put you to work if you show up there. That so. would be true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Crystal, I want to thank you so much for being willing to come back and just talk with us. It's been a pleasure to just discuss all things related to young adults and how yeah. uh, we all can contribute to the ministry just in our own lives as well and our sphere of influence in that regard. So, yeah. thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. And you can join us every Wednesday here on The Living Well at 1 p.m. on KATB 89.3 in Anchorage, as well as KJLP 88.9 in Palmer. You can also catch us online at katb.org. We'll catch you next Wednesday.